In this video we're going to explain the logic behind the Timer Pro line balancing module. So here we have a process already in place and we're going to come up to the balance work here. And to show you an example of how it works we're going to use the example of a specific production quantity. Right Now you can see down here that based upon the current plan that we have in the background here we can get about 62 units an hour out of this particular uh, line setup here. So what we're going to do is switch to the production and it's going to say what is your required production per hour and let's say we're looking not 62 but we're looking for 86. How many people do we need? So we click on the balance and it instantly tells us we need 9 people here and 9 people are going to be 82% utilised. Okay, and that's going to give us our 86 units we're looking for. Now what's actually happened here? It's actually did an iterative process. You can see this is percent of the optimum here. 100% of what we asked for, 86, is 86. So what it's actually done though, it's done an iterative process that started back up here at 51% of the optimum. So you can see 51% of 86 is 43.86. And it's figured out that it needs four operators for that. And those four operators are going to be 94% utilised here. After it's done that, it's done it for 52% of the optimum, 53% of the optimum. And it continues that all the way up here. You can see it going through the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. And then here's our 100, which gives us what we asked for. And it keeps on going all the way up to 150% um, of the optimum. Now, if we had, let's say, for just for argument's sake, we had 800, it says the total work content here is 308 seconds. Just say for argument's sake that we had 860 seconds and we were looking for 86 units. That would mean our every 10 seconds, 860 divided by 86, we would require a unit off there. And if we could give exactly each station 10 seconds worth of work, we would have a 100% utilised. That's never going to happen. Why not? Because obviously different activities take different times. And even if you allocate the work content to different people, it's not going to be easily broken up here. So what we're doing is this iterative process and we're looking for where certain things happen. Now notice here my my six, sorry, look here, notice, notice, notice here that for a, notice here that for 86 units, we need nine people. But those same nine people could also give us 82 units. They could also give us all the way up to 92 units. So this is showing you what the capability is. In fact, 86 is rather this middle of the road utilization here. You may well decide that you might want those nine people to be more, uh, to produce more units up to 92, but you might not want to produce the inventory. So you might make a conscious decision to stay at the 86 level. Or you might come down and say, well, I can run with eight and I know I'm going to give 82 units an hour. It's not quite what I'm looking for, but maybe I can make it up some other place else. Or maybe those eight people can give you the uh, 82 units. And it's not quite what I'm looking for, but maybe I can make it up someplace else. Maybe by running a few minutes extra at the end of the shift, this type of thing, right? So you're giving you a bunch of options here as to make a decision as to what to do here. And the calculation that's taking place here is um, fairly complicated, but let's just look at it here. I can bring up this Excel sheet. So let's take the example. Here's my work content. You can see it right here, 308.816. That's how much time we use here. The production per hour we're looking for is 86. Right now, if we take the the attack time was going to be the let's say this is in um, our units are in seconds, uh, 3600 divided by the demand. So that means that just under every 42 seconds we're expecting to get a unit. And if we know that we need nine stations here, uh, here's the utilization. 81.97, it's rounded to 82 over here in the summary here. Now, there's actually a formula, a very simple formula here that's being shown here. And I can show it to you right here. The utilization is the total work content, which of course is fixed. That's how much it's going to take to do it. Divided by the tag time by the number of stations. And that's where we're getting the utilization number from here. So that's the numbers that are displaying here. And it's doing that for every single one of these uh, steps in the process, all the way from 51% to 150% to come up with the answer here. Now, if you decide that that's the one you want to work with, you click on the details. 
and it shows you what it's going to break out the work content among the different people involved here and if you click on the save it's going to reorganize it into that particular uh, balance that it found there if you wanted to take the other case where I come back in here I'm looking for production 86 again and let's say you're willing to accept additional uh, inventory you might decide to come down to here they're far better utilized 87 percent here almost 88 percent as opposed to being 82 percent here we click on the details it shows you what they're going to do we click on the save and it's going to reorganize the work into that one if you decide that rather than running with uh, nine operators you prefer to run with eight operators and see what you can do to make up the, the shortfall you can come in here you can balance the work you're going to come in, you're going to do the same thing again, production, 86 units, balance the work, and we're going to scroll up this time, and we're going to look for 8, not 9, 8. So we're going to pick this one right here, we're going to show the details of this, it shows us what's going to happen to this, this particular configuration, and we save that there. Now we're running with 8 operators. So this is just the iterative process that's going through every time you do a balance. It doesn't matter whether you do operators, production or tag time, exactly the same iteration is happening.